Hello everyone, uh, my name is Gavin. I'm a careers advisor here at Northwest Regional College and I'd just like to welcome you all to our latest edition of Entrepreneur of the Month. And with me today we have Gronya Kelly, who is the CEO of Bubble Bum, and she's going to talk to us today about her story, her inspiration of getting her business started, and give any advice as well to our uh, listeners out there who are thinking of starting up their own business in the future. So Gronya, thank you very much for uh, agreeing to take part today. Thank you for having me, Gavin. I appreciate it a lot. Um, and first question, Grania, really, is can you just tell us a little bit about uh, Bubble Bomb and how you got started, and your inspiration, and a, a little bit about your business? Well, Gavin, Bubble Bomb is a, as the name suggests, is a bubble for your bum. So I had come up with the idea for Bubble Bomb when I was traveling with my own children. And every time I arrived to the car rental desk, of course, they didn't have the car seat when I got there. So I came home and as you do, you come home and say, oh, that didn't work out. But I came home and rang every crash test laboratory that I could find to ask them why there was no such thing as an inflatable seat. And they explained to me all the reasons why there wasn't. And I set about answering those questions and answering all those whys to solve the problem. So that's how I come up with the inflatable seat. And um, as, you, as you know, when parents are traveling and also trying to fit three across the back seat, my, my boys were really small. There's no way that I was going to be traveling without car seats for them. And you understand yourself having small children of your own. So that's basically how I came up with the idea and took it from concept to shelf in nine months and was like a dog with a bone as I am with everything. So that's how I came up with the idea. Excellent. And when did, uh, when did you start uh, Bubble Bum? It was in March 2009 was my first trip to China when I came up with the idea and we sold our first seats online on the 1st of December 2009, so literally nine months. Excellent, excellent. And in relation to your um, education and your experience, you know, do you think, do you think that was a contributing factor to uh, the, um, the inception, the idea of, of Bubble Bum? We didn't have any classes back then on blow up car seats. Um, but uh, to be fair, my when I was at school, I was so disruptive in school. I couldn't sit in any classroom. The teachers couldn't control me. And it wasn't because I was badly behaved. I just couldn't sit in the classroom. So I was doing maths A-level and art A-level. And I actually had to leave school and do the BTEC maths level four in the tech here in Derry because I just couldn't sit in the maths class with the teacher. So I did all did very well on that and I proceeded to do building construction as you would consider to be the natural movement from art and maths for building construction from that working in local radio and from that working in the travel trade and then I set up my own uh, travel uh, agency business I had a franchise of travel counsellors and I did really particularly well there and I think what what I was disruptive in school because I pretty sure that I am undiagnosed ADHD or certainly on that spectrum and find it really hard to concentrate all the time. So I'll either be like super focused on whatever you're telling me and I will hear everything that's going on or I will hear nothing. So there's no in between area with me. And don't worry, you've got me 100%. I'm listening to everything you say today, Gavin. But it is, I find it really hard to focus. I find it really difficult to read. So I'll listen to audio books instead. So those types of things were, I found, English in school was really difficult for me. English language, I excelled at. English literature, I literally couldn't get past the first chapter in the book. And back in those days, nobody tested you for dyslexia or any of that sort of stuff. Don't even know if that's what it would have been, but it actually hasn't really held me back. I did also go to Cambridge and did a leadership course in Cambridge, but that was like further on in my career as opposed to in the early stages. I wouldn't have been able to sit through that whenever I was at university age, and that's quite honest. And, and I was accepted to art college. My parents didn't allow me to go. And I'm so glad they didn't let me go because I could have come back anything from art college because I was so easily influenced and everything was so exciting for me that I definitely I definitely would have changed who I am if I had gone to art college. So I'm actually really glad that I didn't go. But in our house growing up, it was always a case of you set up your own business. My dad had all his own businesses. And whenever one of us, I mean, one of his businesses had been blown up in the troubles. And then he went into the bank and told the bank manager they needed another business. And back in those days, the bank manager would have given you money and said, here, you can open this other business. Not like it is now. So he literally handed him the keys of what is now Brendan's chip shop. And that was my dad's chip shop. He sold it to Brendan at the time. So that... 
I suppose all of those things and that mindset in our house, we were we were never encouraged academically. Like when I was in school, I was playing the piano, the cello, the clarinet, the singing lessons, John's ambulance, choir practice. This was every week. Is it any wonder that I wouldn't excel in any one subject? I was jack of all trades, and master of none. No, oh, excellent. No, that's, that's that's great advice as well for those listening because you know. Um, you know, you're right about the academic path and, 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 you know, obviously here in the college, we offer so many different ranges of courses for different, you know, with people with different passions and so on. So, no, it's great to really hear your story there. And obviously for our, our listeners today, you know, have you any any advice for any student out there, whether they be a Northwest who's a college student or any student in, in, in any school in the Northwest, any advice for them of how they would even begin to, to start thinking about a business concept or a business idea uh, and they really take a, a business idea and, and go go for it like you did uh, with Bubble Bum? I think, do you know what I find is the most single most important thing is confidence and confidence and relationship building. And I suppose people have asked me, well, why you, why you? And I go, well, why not me? Hmm. Like, I mean, you don't have to have gone to Stanford yeah. to achieve. You actually don't. And to be honest with you, I have, um, I'm been part of the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year alumni. I was on their finals of the awards in 2011. Oh, yes, right, yeah. and, and, and really, most of the guys that I know who are the most successful in that peer group are, first of all, on totally on a spectrum, or some, totally on an ADHD spectrum, most mm-hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. And... I would say a high proportion of them didn't go through third level education. And that actually has come full circle now where even my own sons are, when one of them's at uni, the other one's looking about going to uni, but they're very academic, but they're also questioning the benefits of the academia of what they're doing. One of them's doing engineering, so he will have to do that. But they're also talking about doing apprenticeships rather than actually going to university. And I think that understanding that there are more ways of learning other than having to do it in a school environment. School environment just didn't work for me, Gavin. It just wasn't going to be for me. But what I did learn, and this is something that has really stood to my advantage, and I would say that it's probably the sole reason that we were able to make this business a success, was that I'm able to really build and nurture relationships. And I think if if you have a natural personality of building strong foundations for relationships. And I don't just mean being best friends with everybody you meet. I mean, building strong, proper relationships where there's trust involved and that you can use that trust as a currency. So I would do that very, very frequently in business. And there are a lot of other people that I help. And there's just that, there's that unspoken degree of trust because of the relationships that we have built. So. The first thing that I would say is, why not me? And ask yourself the question, why not me? The second thing is, you need to have full confidence in yourself. And again, that's taking you back to the why not me. Mm. But having confidence in yourself, nobody else is actually any better than you. Mm. Hey, Kevin, yeah. you're not any better than me, but I'm certainly not any better than you. Mm-hmm. And because we all have all of these skills, and I have got lots of skills, I would say lots of my Personal, my, my personal skills in terms of my relationship skills would be m- much more superior, I would say, than actual business skills. Yeah. But I find that with an awful lot, again, of my peer network, that a lot of it is relationship building. So if people are, are, are nurturing those relationships, and, and again, whenever you go to ask a question, this is really important. When you go to ask somebody a question about starting a business, don't be going to them and saying, oh, tell me all about it. How did you do your business? Go to them with two questions that you need answered. And it doesn't matter how stupid you may think these questions are. It's only the stupid people who don't ask the questions in the first place. Like no question is stupid. And I ask every stupid question in the book, I can assure you. I am sitting on banks and the banks are talking and all of these abbreviations. And I said, I'm sorry, I have no idea what you're talking about. You're going to have to dumb this down for me. No idea. So all of that stuff being really honest but also building really trusting relationships and people will give as long as you're honest with them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great, great sound advice, uh, uh, Grania, because you're right, you know, like the the careers team here in the college, we kind of hone those, what 
what's called transversal skills, you know, communication mm -hmm. and receptive to feedback and, and interpersonal ability, building relationships, um, you know, and the academic staff, obviously, we, you know, um, a lot of them go through the, you mentioned apprenticeships, higher level apprenticeships, and then the more academic side. But, you know, it's great to, to hear from you in terms of where you started. And you had that chance to go to university, you had that chance to, to go to a very, obviously, uh, you know, um, distinguished university to, to pursue the, the, your arts, but you decided to go the route of the business. Any future, any uh, things in the pipeline for Bubble Boom? Yeah, Uncle, we've actually got loads of stuff in the pipeline. We're, we're, we are managing other brands at the moment. Mm. Um, and we've got a major brand in America that we're managing at the moment. So that's actually working out really well. And we're bringing other products to the pipeline for Bubble Boom. This year wasn't an ideal year, yeah. but the year that's been in it with the lack of travel and our product being a travel product, there was no point in us introducing anything at this year. Uh, but we do have plenty of things coming down the pipeline for that and, and, and many other business ideas. And if, if people have business ideas, try and find yourself a business mentor. Yeah. And, my, and Gavin, you and I talked about this earlier. A business mentor is not somebody who is written on paper that they're a business mentor. A business mentor is somebody who's been there and done it. Mm. Like try and find somebody who's been there and done it. And as I say, have your two questions ready that you want the answer to. No, definitely. No, hopefully we can work with you in the future again, Grania. Uh, we have a, a big event in, uh, in November um, for Global Enterprise. And it'll be great to have you on campus to, to share your story and, and, and even maybe uh, liaise with each other about becoming a mentor for, for our young people because entrepreneurship is, is a big thing that we try and advocate here in the college. So, so thank you very much for your time, Grania. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all the best with, uh, with the company. And we'll be in touch again soon. It's my pleasure, Gavin. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thank so, you. Everyone, thank you very much. I was Agronia Kelly, the CEO of Bubble Bomb. Thank you for listening to our latest edition of Entrepreneur of the Month. Uh, we'll see you all soon. And any questions, please email us at careers at nwrc.ac.uk. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks again, Gronia. All the best.